that when you do go in the military, you know, have a plan of action. Mm -hmm. You know, again, don't strive to be a bottom feeder. Strive to do something better. So I'm ready to go into this house, ready to kick down the door and go in and take care of whatever I need to take care of. One of the Afghans pulls me aside and he says, Mike, let me go in first. If somebody's going to die for this country, it's going to be me. Wow. And right then and there, it's like, okay, yeah. all the respect in the world, brother. Yeah. You know, and so it was it was amazing to be able to, you know, go to this guy's wedding and, and see that, you know, see him live in a country where now he doesn't have to worry about, you know, him or his wife, you know, being targeted by, you know, a terrorist group or something, mm -hmm. you know, just living life and living the American dream. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's fantastic. Man, that is fucking crazy. So you went through all these years in the military and oftentimes, you know, in my experience, you you have people who they end up retiring from the military and, you know, they're, I mean, there was even a thing on, um, on Twitter a few years ago where it was like, you know, uh, what did you, what did you get from your time? This is like potentially a dark line of questioning, but people were like, what did you actually gain from your time or the arm U S army Twitter account posted? What did you gain from, or from being with the U S army? And it was just people being like, Oh, I lost my arm. Oh, I, you know, I have to take all these different psychiatric medications. You know, I saw this many of my friends die. Just like it ended up going really fucking dark, yeah, you yeah. know, when you're obviously they were hoping it would go like a positive direction. Like, Oh, you know, I paid for my school or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of friends where that that still is is their view. And, I, you know, I'm curious being that it was something where you were seeking it out, you were seeking going further with it, and then you essentially had to be like drug drug out of it. Mm -hmm. What is your, what, what is it like looking back on this now? Like how has your view of, of everything changed? And, you know, would you do it again? In a heartbeat. Man. In a heartbeat. Yeah, like if, if I hadn't gone down with injury, I would have done 20 maybe even 30, mm -hmm. you know, because I love what I did. You know, I see all the negative stuff too, you know? So a lot of that stuff, people will say a bunch of negative <clears throat> things because they don't utilize everything that they should utilize while they're in the military, you know? So what people don't realize is the military is a lot like the real world, okay? You have your people that excel and make something of themselves. And then you have your bottom feeders, mm -hmm. you know, who just coast by, do the bare minimum just to coast by, right? Not take advantage of any type of benefits or education or furthering their career or anything like that. And then they'll down the military. Right. You know, me, man, I did, I did schooling while I was in for free. You know, um, I got a lot of stuff now because of the military. You know, I was one of the most elite soldiers in the whole world, you know, because of the military. You know, all my amazing training that I've had. You know, uh, really, my overall experience in the military was positive. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there's some things I don't, I didn't like, but dude, That's no job. matter what job you have, yep. there's going to be things that you don't like. And there's always going to be people who have bad things to say about it too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's baseball players that make you know, twenty million a year, <laughs> and I guarantee you, they're going to say some negatives about being in the MLB. Yeah. You know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. No, most definitely. You know, so. So what about if somebody was actually like looking into the military? What would, you know, what, what would you say to someone who came up to you and was like, you know, I'm thinking about, thinking about joining the army. What's, what's kind of your mindset around it? I say, go for it. Yeah. You know, uh, even if you do like a three year stint in the military, the rewards you can reap from it afterward is insane. You know, um, now when you do go into the military, you know, have a plan of action, mm -hmm. you know, again, don't strive to be a bottom feeder strive to do something better, you know? And, that, and that's that's me, right? So my first stint in the military, I was a tanker. And I'm not putting down takers at all, of course, all respect. I mean, everybody takes the same oath that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, Green Beret, no Green Beret, everybody takes the same oath. So respect to all of them. But I knew I was meant for more. Something, something in me told me, you're meant for more. Go do something else. And so that's why I jumped to Special forces, right. you know, try to be special forces, which fortunately I made it, you know, um, that's amazing, man. You just have to utilize all the tools that you're given, you know, and, and these are all things that are like available to pretty much anyone. It's not, it's not a matter of like, oh, well, you know, Mike was fucking kicking ass and taking names. So he had, I mean, I'm sure there was some things that you had access to being, you know, your rank and everything like that. But in general, like a lot of this stuff is just, you know, you just, it's there. You just have to use it. Yeah. I mean, free medical. 
you know, free medical, uh, moving into my house. I moved into my house. I paid the closing costs of my house and that's it. <sighs> Holy shit. You know, and that's it because I was military. Now, the guy who's a cook in the army mm -hmm. will get that same benefit as Mike the Green Beret. Wow. You know, when I got out, I had about $60,000 to spend on college or trade schools. You know, while I was in, I got to go to school for free. Hmm. Every year that I was in, I got $4,500 a year to spend on school. You know, so while I was deployed in Afghanistan, you know, we'd go out. So like a typical day with a mission, you know, we'd go, we'd lift weights in our gym. Uh, we'd go on mission, take care of bad guys, come back. My camp was special. So, you know, it was just Green Beret. So we actually had a, a tattoo shop. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... So when I ran this camp, I noticed there was an American contractor and he was in charge of the security and he dude was all tatted up. Mm -hmm. So I got to talking with him. He told me in a real world, he was a, t a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. So I was like, check it out, man. I have these extra buildings. I'll give you a couple of buildings. You can charge these other contractors like mechanics and stuff, charge them whatever you want. Just hook my team up. And he was like, all right, bet. So he sent for his tattoo stuff. Mm -hmm. And just completely set up these buildings, you know, Holy so shit. big screen TVs and, you know, porno mags and beer <laughs> and, you know, all this, just so that's what we would do. Right. You know, we go out, take care of bad guys, hit the gym, uh, go get tatted up, yeah. you know, and just hang out there. You know, right. me, what I would also do is I'd go take online college courses, right. you know, instead of getting wasted mm -hmm. on booze, I'd go take some college, you know, use my time wisely, you know, and. Everybody has that opportunity, yeah. you know, especially when you deploy, because you're going to have a lot of downtime. Hey, everybody. Did you like that episode? You know you did, and you know you want to see some more. So, oh, my God, you should click that subscribe button and then share it to someone else who wants to hear it. And then go find me on Instagram or TikTok or whatever at Andrew PFM and hit me with some questions of your own. So we'll see you guys there later.